Hey everybody, welcome behind the scenes here at Jamie Riddler Studios. I am Jamie and I realize how rarely I tell you more about who I am or why I'm here or what I do. I just dive into this conversation like we're old friends, which I love that so many of you have been here for so long, but I know also that some of you are new or have been following along. So I just wanna take a moment to say that I am the director of Jamie Riddler Studios and what we do there is offer classes and content that's designed to help you bring your creativity to life. And what I share here is often what's going on behind the scenes, what I'm thinking about, what I'm inspired by, what it is I'm hearing, what I'm hearing rumbling. And I do that in the spirit of what I believe a studio is and a studio is about. I believe that a studio is a sacred space, a space that when we step into, I'm doing this because I'm thinking about my logo. Maybe you've seen it. It's kind of this double circle and it's meant to represent this magical space where you walk in and as you start to speak your words, as you start to unpack your colors, as you start to experiment and play and risk and grow, your art starts to come to life. You start to understand who you are as a creative. The space starts to take on your energy that's true and authentic and real and unique to you. And so this is what I believe when we awaken our creativity, whether it is on the page or on the palette or in our lives, that that energy allows us to start to create a life and work that is deeply rooted in our souls and a real gift to the world like the unique like we're bringing something unique to the environmental system that we live in and we're needed and called for and we need to discover it within ourselves so that we can shine it out into the world and i think for many of us creativity is the path it's the journey, it's the adventure. And so today I wanted to share with you two strategies that I have used that have creatively opened up my life. And again, I do this in the spirit of the studio. Let me tell you something else I believe. I believe that when each of us walk into the studio, we are there to do the work. We are there to honor ourselves, the creative work and one another. And that each of us, no matter where we are on the journey, whether we are returning to our creativity after a long time, whether it's brand new to us to be exploring, or whether we are a professional who's been working for years, that in this studio, when we are all in the process of learning, sharing, growing, expanding, risking, expressing, being real, like finding the truest way to share our creative souls. We are doing the same work. I think of it a lot like whether you are dancing professionally in the National Ballet or showing up to your very first class and you're six years old or three years old or 60 years old. We all start at the bar. And I, the image I also use for this to encourage us to always be on that growing edge is yoga. So I may step into that yoga class and there may be somebody who's been doing yoga forever and she gets into that stretch and she is way over here. <laughs> and I get into that stretch and I might be oh here. But if we are both on our growing edge, if we are both in that space of leaning into of stretch, of sitting with that discomfort and finding our way through. We are on the same journey. And when we know that, we can bring a certain respect to one another and we can be in deep community. It's one of the things I deeply value about this concept of the studio. So. When I share my strategies, my hope is I'm putting some tools in that studio and saying, hey, these are really useful for me. Maybe they'll be useful for you. And then you get to pick it up and say, let me try it, Jamie. 
okay, um, this is useful, but I'm a, I'm a little, uh, I'm left-handed. So I just need to make this adjustment and then it'll be bang on for me. Awesome. And then you put the left-handed version in the studio and that can help more people. Or maybe you say, you know what, this doesn't work for me. How I, and you put it down, you say, how I work, how it works for me is this. And you put it on the table. And this is such a generous way of sharing and building wisdom in a community. It's how we approach things in Mindful Mondays in our wisdom circle. I'll share my take on a question and open up to the group, and everyone will share the wisdom they've learned on the question. But then the real work comes in you, trying it on, experimenting, shifting, growing, recognizing, interpreting, and how analyzing, uh, sensing. Each of us, our relationship to our own creativity and our own work is unique. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't share with one another what we've learned in the hopes that it will be useful. So my two strategies that have been helpful to me. The first is being open to possibility, including possibility that takes me off my path. <laughs> so the example I always use for this is that when I went to university, I went to the University of Toronto and I had registered as an English major. And in the week before classes started, I was walking through the quad and my boyfriend at the time saw a sign and he said, Jamie, I think you'd like that. And what it was, was auditions for the theater program. I said, yeah, you know what? I bet I would. I walked over, I signed up, I learned what I had to do. I auditioned and I got in. It changed the direction of my life. And so I didn't know how it was going to turn out. Uh, I gave myself permission each step of the way to um, feel into it. I could decide that I didn't want to do it. I clearly could have also not gotten in. Uh, but my instinct was, yeah. That's for me. So I literally, what's funny is I think about how it took me off the path of just being an English major and instead brought this whole other life into my world. But when I think about it, it's funny because I literally walked like this. <laughs> I was on this path to go somewhere and I had to go this way to sign up. And so very symbolic in that physical expression too. So many times in my life, this has been the case. I've been set, my sights have been set here and then suddenly something comes up and I go, oh, maybe that. Even my relationship with my husband, I had, was at the time that I met him, I was absolutely clear that I did not want to meet somebody that I was not interested in dating. And then he showed up and here we are all these years later. So imagine if I had just been, had the blinders on, how different my life would have been. And since I love my life, I am glad that I gave those yeses, that I followed those winks and went that way. The other thing that I have done that has made a huge difference in my life, is particularly my creative life, is to stop waiting for the powers that be to give me permission to pursue my art. So... Um, I'm talking about the directors, the editors, the heads of the programs, the, the people who say, yay or nay, you have talent, you have potential, come in. Yes, I'm going to publish your book. Yes, you can uh, perform in this show. That's not to say that I never audition or submit or that I'm not open to that world. I have done that many times. Some of you may remember when I auditioned for a dance performance just a couple of years ago. I would have thought that I was well past the time in my life when I would be dancing in a performance out there for the world to see. I auditioned and I did the show and it was extraordinary. So I'm not saying don't be open to that. Keep pursuing those things that call to you that feel like they are your dreams. And don't wait for them. This is a strategy that has been with me since I was 12 years old. And I had moved to Toronto and I had no sense of belonging. I did not fit in. I did not feel connected. I felt lost and I felt depressed. And I remember the moment when I realized I didn't have to wait for somebody else to invite me to a party. I didn't have to wait for somebody else to include me. I could create my own thing. 
And I did. And this is a strategy that has served me for the rest of my life life. In university, I did this. I used to host pub nights. I would say, hey, me and my sister Shannon, who made it all so much better that there was the two of us there, that we would say, hey, we're going to be at the pub on Saturday night at eight o'clock. Everyone's welcome. Come bring a friend. And this turned into, sometimes it would be a small group. Sometimes it would be a big group, but it was always a wonderful group. You can create your own activities. You can create your own shows. Why not, instead of only waiting for a gallery to include your work, why not create a series and put on a show, book a space, put it up in your house and have a party, invite people in to see your work. And each thing that you do will teach you something. You know, I am a deep believer that what we create creates us. So as we create whatever it is that wants to come through our hearts to be created, it teaches us something about who we are. It teaches us more about our art itself, the skills of our art. We become more and more adept as we do. Uh, and that's important too. And we start to build a powerful relationship with that creative spirit that is in our hearts. We start to honor it. We start to explore it. And for me, this is the primary relationship, right? Is we are developing a relationship between our creative spirit and our creative work. And we're bringing like that magician card in the tarot, we're bringing that energy of spirit like in here, and then we're making something and putting it out here. Both of these strategies are really disruptors. And if you're like me, um, I grew up a sensitive, quiet, introverted, um, creative, good girl. <laughs> Being a disruptor wasn't really something that you would think of when it came to me. Um, but my spirit did not want to be crushed by the weight. My spirit did not want to be crushed by the lack of invitation. So I found, I turned to my spirit to find the strength to move outside of the system and make art and life based on the truth that was in here and the resources I could draw on. And with that, I felt free. What I hope most of all that you take away from this is that your creative journey is valuable no matter what. Trust yourself to bring into the world what it is that you are meant to bring into the world. And as you do, it will change you. It will change your life and it will change the world. And, and that may happen in ways that surprise you. It may not be that the thing that you create changes the world, but rather that around you people witness your commitment, your devotion, your willingness to brave sharing your voice, your energy, your joy, your determination. And in doing so, you are a role model for them to take hold of whatever path that is true and deep and real in their heart. And as each of us do that, we will open up so much possibility in this world that needs it so deeply. So that was what was on my mind this week. I hope you have a wonderful week in your studio. I hope you explore this idea of disruption, of not waiting. Coalesce your creative energy into a project. Turn it into a something. It will even if you don't think you know how, it will help guide the way, whether it is a podcast, a party, a blog, a book, a doll, a photograph, a poem. As you bring it to life, you are welcoming creative energy into the world. And that, that is magic. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.